Okay, so this, this is an advertisement for a document that I, I um, partly working on. And uh, the, uh, this is an, a document that's trying to document uh, what is required to have a validator do its job. Not to document what validators do because that's all over the place. And uh, frankly, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up is that the authors, we've been working on this document slowly. You'll see the his, I have some little bit of history in there. Um, but we, don't, we amongst ourselves don't have total agreement with what needs to be in the document. And so I'm, we're trying to get the input from those the document will, will impact, which are the operators and the implementers. So that's the main reason why I'm bringing this up here. Um, so this is, I'm not just trying to say, come to the IETF and comment on the draft. Um, I'll get into that. But we really want to have some input for this document out here. Um, and the, the title of it is uh, IETF style draft, MGLT, DNS op, DNSSEC validator requirements, and 07 is the latest version of it. Uh, now, so the reason for this, bringing this up there, there are a bunch of topics in here that we really, we need to get a broader uh, set of input on. Uh, I think we have some disagreement internally about what, what should be said. Uh, now, the history of the document, it's been around for a long time, which is usually the wine of many documents in the IETF. Um, I looked back to see, uh, I was added as an author at some point, and I was added as an author in March of 2017, which is months after I decided I'd never go to the IETF again. It was kind of odd to be talking about on your draft when I said I'm not going to go there anymore. So I've not actually been to the IETF since this document's had my name on it. Um, I do the document from the other author who's been pushing this a bit more actively, hasn't quite gotten this to be a DNS op, a DNS operations working group document, an officially blessed document, but it's kind of been on the edges of, of, of interest out there. Uh, and again, the reason why it's kind of stalled is that I, you know, I think the document really needs to have a better uh, audience or better, better uh, input into what goes in there. Obviously, it's that, that's why the document exists. Um, so yeah, this, this may or may not be a good document. I think we need to find out, the authors need to find out whether it's worth keep pursuing this or not. So but I'm going to make a plea here to have people take a look at what's in this. And, Inside the draft, we have these five topics uh, that, that I'll go through one by one uh, and talk about kind of what's, the, what's in the draft. But these are things we see are externalities, external pieces to the validation process. Uh, it's very tempting at times to talk about how to validate data. We don't want to do that. That's elsewhere. There's already a defined process. But when it comes time to writing the software that do the validation, what does it have to live inside of? Uh, the number one uh, topic, we, the, the lead topic there is time. Uh, DNSSEC requires wall clock time. You know, the RR SIGs have times in there. Uh, that was there because we don't want to have replay attacks. We have, so that signatures can't last forever. Otherwise, what you say today will be good forever, no matter what you do. Um, so it was interesting to me that this was actually the, one of the first topics in the, in the draft, that not every device out there does NTP. Um, I just assume that, being that I usually work in those kind of systems. But all these other systems out there do validation will have to deal with the fact that they don't know what time it is, but so they need to, but they need to do that for validation. It's got to be in there somewhere. Uh, the second part, this part was the part that drew me in, and this has to do with the trust anchors. You know, there's a KSK rollover. Uh, uh, Roy's going to talk about part of that next. Um, in, in going through the process of the trust anchor, or the KSK rollover for, Ver, for, uh, for ICANN, uh, we began to think about what is in validators. What, what, what is a trust anchor? What is it? It's essentially it's, it's like a data store, or database, or data structure. It's, what, it's a data piece. It's configuration data. Um, and it needs to be managed appropriately. And you know, some, some of the tools out there really had to, to up the visibility of what's in that data for operators to be able to play on the KSK rollover. So I was interested in getting that document to make sure we understood that it's as much a small database, a very small database, but it needs all the, the, the ways of inspecting it and changing it. Uh, one of the topics I find more controversial is the idea of what do you do when a key is, is, is kind of revoked. Not, not revoked in the sense that we're pulling the key out, but you find that a key, a key has, been, has been found to be bad. It was a bad key. Someone else put the key in instead of the real owner, or something's gone wrong, and they want to re pull the key back out. Uh, there, in the draft, it talks about being able to go into the cache, identifying all the data that was validated by that key, and, and marking it as bad data. Um, I'm a little skeptical that that's workable because I know that we've talked about that for years in implementations of DNSSEC. Uh, but again, this is something I, we, I think we need to get input from the outside to see if we can get the proper thing written into this uh, draft. So that's one of the topics in there which I think would help uh, getting input on and before it goes forward. 
Uh, cryptographic code management, this is another topic which I think could use some help where this talks about having the validator try to talk to the authoritative server to get the right cryptography going back and forth. Um, I think we need help there. Um, I don't, you know, I have my op opinions, we have other opinions in the group of people putting it together, but we need a better idea of what should be said about that or, or not said about that. And then finally, the, the, the last topic, which I've also found to be something that's bothered me for 20 years on this, when you have a DNSSEC no, what do you do with it? How do you report that? Do you just log the error somewhere or do you try to alert the operator, the operator or someone up a chain? Because sometimes these errors are transient, they come and go. Like if I can't get a key because of timeout, that comes and goes, that could be an outage type of thing. If I, get, if I keep getting the wrong information, then there's, there's something else going on there. You, you can suspect from the validator why this went wrong and we have to improve, I think, what we can do with some of the, out, the error. Because we all know the serve fail, uh, R code serve fail is kind of, it's all we have. But what can we do to do better than that? The logs could actually have more information about what part of the validation chain went wrong. We've experimented that, experimented that over the years. I don't think we've ever gotten there. I think that would help too with uh, the validators. Uh, a validator operators be more comfortable in operating. For example, when do you put a negative trust anchor in? Your log should tell you. You should try that maybe. So those are the, the topics we have in, in, the, in the paper. Um, comments, uh, right now it's not, you can go to the IETF and talk about it there on the mailing list there, that's fine. Uh, generally the document like this is not a working group document, it's also good to talk to the authors because the authors still have, a, have the, they're still writing the document. And the three uh, email addresses are up there. Uh, Dan McGault, I say Dan McGault, I've actually never heard his name said even though I talked to him uh, face to face. Uh, he's the primary author, it's under his name that he's done this for years. Uh, myself and then Dan York at ISC, at I, I, ISOC rather, also has been, ha, has his name on the document too. Uh, you can address uh, comments of those. Uh, things in this, is this, you know, let, if you read the document and you think this document is not worth it, say so. I mean, I'm, I'm, it, that, that's a good thing to hear. Um, you know, it, nothing, nothing like working on something that nobody wants you to do. Uh, uh, also, uh, a question I have is, is this document going to be helpful to those who are writing code today? Do you, do you think that validators are done and we don't need to worry about this, or do you think that this actually has a, a real open uh, field for, for being used by somebody? Uh, and to help you uh, find a document, the last part has a title, DNSSEC Validator Requirements, and then that's a, a link to find the, uh, the current version of the document, um, and you can read it there if you uh, choose, to, uh, choose to do so. So that's pretty much the end of my talk about here. I'll put that back up there. And uh, any questions? Any, I mean, if you have comments, I, I don't think anyone here has comments about this. I don't think anyone's read the draft. I mean, I'm not going to do that. But if you feel I need to say something about this, let me know. Um, it'd be really good if it goes to the, all the authors uh, so we all hear uh, what's going on. So. No, I like the idea. I mean, this is a threat. You did it. Yeah. Yeah, by, it died. I'd like to repeat what he said. Okay. I, I, I like the idea because of the point, the point about putting up, uh, pushing up the, uh, the detection or, or the revoke yeah. in terms of threat intel kind of play yeah. um, for the community. Okay. I think that's very interesting. So okay. Uh, okay. Inter uh, interest in the reporting. Yeah. Like, so just the feedback. I think that's that could okay. be very interesting. Okay. So the, the, so the comment is to uh, look at the reporting and the, the fifth uh, uh, topic there could be interesting what you do with the, for intelligence and, and so on, tracking uh, what, where the outages are. Any others? Are you, uh, you mentioned reporting better information about why validation failed. Have you looked through the current um, extended error reporting draft and tried to compare that to your report? No, I haven't. Do it. Okay. <laughs> Is that, is that, this is the extended error reporting draft. Repeat the question. Thank, thank you, Shane. Uh, <laughs> you stumped me on that one. So the question has to do with, did I look at, do we have you looked at the extended error reporting draft? And obviously, that, no. Um, is that a, is that concentrating on the, in the protocol level of reporting things or is that the implementation? It's a proposed EDNS extension to get 
more detailed information okay. about it, like an error message. Okay. Such as expired key or okay. signature is expired or something. I'll take take we'll t take a look at that. What I have in mind what what I have in mind and me as opposed to as not all the authors was this is looking more at what the operator configuration logs would have about what's going on internally. So, so not that it's, they're both, they're solving the problem in two different areas, so I'm not yeah. saying, but okay. no. that's my, yeah. my idea here was, you know, the log file, so, so. Any other? I think, oh, yep. yep. yes. Okay, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, they, they, people will skip, scan past it and find, okay, I know what the requirements are related. I have not the papers. Okay, yeah, the, the suggestion is to look at the title and say it's not, the title is, is, a, is misnaming it. It should be like requirements for validators. Yeah, the, the, the environment validators need to do, yeah, working on basically titling is what's more accurate for what we're trying to do. Yeah. You said there were numerous things and there were so, so that everybody else had that it's not interesting and yeah. people would think this is the same thing. Yeah, okay, that's a good, good point. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? I think. Looks like it. Thanks. Thank you.